Hey there, YouTube land. Big Dave here. So I'm sitting here uh, in the kitchen. And um, this is like where it all started in the kitchen. I made my first couple videos. Um, there's a dog food bag behind me. Having my coffee. I'm still waiting for my coffee sponsor. I like nuts.com. If they want to send me free coffee, that's okay too. Green Mountain, I like that coffee. Starbucks, all those. Dunkin' Donuts. I don't get Dunkin' Donuts as much anymore because around here it got really expensive. I can actually get the Starbucks a little bit less and the other stuff I order online. So um, the North Light is coming in from the window giving my face that Rembrandt look, you know. Um, anyway, so uh, I got a couple of questions from people, uh, maybe four people said, oh, uh, asking me about, you know, my auto links and what I'm using and blah, blah, blah. So uh, I says, Laurel, I'll make a quick video. Um, and uh, these are all newer auto links, modern ones. And the ones I use the most, I'm going to cut right to the chase here because I don't want to make this video too long. But um, I'll show you the ones I use all the time, most of the time. This one, and this is a, if you were to measure it, it's a little bit slimmer. This is a 7. And it has more of a focused kind of sound. And the the front of this one is maybe a little bit more narrow than some of the other ones. And in some ways, I don't know, it plays a little bit more like a modern, but it's still definitely an auto link. It just plays has a little more of a modern kind of punch to it but if I I've used it already and it goes right into that Coltrane type thing too easily with the right with this different read on it you know so it gives me a lot of flexibility it's a seven this is I bought this on eBay it was a B stock because it had some kind of a ding in the top or something and um, I don't know I tend to buy them like that I'll get a couple here and there and I'll try them out and if there's one I like I keep it the other ones I'll either sell I might reface one and sell it off to somebody that comes to see me here because uh, I do have customers that come and see me I do work for them sometimes they're looking for a piece and I'll um, make them up a piece right while they're here with me you know um, anyway so uh, this is a seven and like I said it's I use this uh, Van Doren ligature on here because that's what seems to play on this. It just gives it a lot of punch and it has a certain thing about it that I like. So that's it. Um, it's in my bag of stuff. Oh, and you know, someone else asked me about the cork grease. I forgot who it was. I would just send them out some good wishes. But I do have cork grease in here. I don't need to use much cork grease with the metal mouthpieces because they seem to go right on my cork without any trouble. Um, but the rubber ones seem to stick more, so I use it. Another thing I have in this bag, this was, I'm off topic here, is uh, these little uh, nail files. They're good for just buffing up the side of a reed really quick. And, um, yeah, they work. Okay, so we're going to put this guy back. I'm having the auto link tour right now. Oh wait, I forgot to put my knife back. This is my reed knife. I don't know which one it is. It's my common one. It's a Buck Trio. It has three blades. It has a flat blade. This little blade for getting into tight spaces, like in the corners, if I want to take a little bit off, it's good. Then the big blade, and but the blade that I use once in a while is I like to have the flat blade and I'll just very lightly go over the back of the reed where the lettering is because sometimes the red lettering on the reeds is raised up and it doesn't seal the reed properly I have a video on that somewhere about the lettering on the reeds okay so let me not wander off the topic here because we're talking about auto links someday I'll tell you about my old auto links because I had some really good ones 
So I know what they play like. And I've worked on a bunch of Autolink so Hundreds of them. Okay, anyway. So this is my other one. This is more like a normal 7. I found this one. It was another B stock I got from some someplace. And it has a little more baffle to it. See that? Just And it has a wider tip. They're not super consistent. I do check them to see if the tables are flat. And I have a video on that too. Sometimes there's a peak in the back. Rather than reface the whole mouthpiece, you can just file that. If you're careful, you got to have the knack for it. Just take that peak down. That's all you need to do. You don't need to do anything else. You don't need to do a big refacing on the mouthpiece when the only thing wrong with it is a little peak in the back. You could take that down and reduce how much uh, space there is in the neck. This, this, not the neck. That I'm talking about guitar, but from the reed. But this one is flat, and um, it has a, a good response. A little bit of a fatter sound. This is a Rigatti Gold three light this is one of the reeds that I might use on the auto link the other one is a two and a half blue box Van Doren somebody asked me about the ZZ Jazz I do use something this summer sometimes three and a half ZZ Jazz on these same mouthpieces on the sevens that is um, because if it gets really humid out they seem to hold together better in some ways and the other reeds get mushy so uh, a 3 is too soft I use a 3 ZZ Jazz on my Mark 7 with um, like my Van Doren T9 metal or my T10 which is a rubber mouthpiece that just seems to be what plays on there and if I'm playing like a horn section or a big band gig outside in the summer again gives me a lot of flexibility and if not, on my Mark 7, I use two rubber fill tones with Rigatti 2 hard. Sometimes ZZ Jazz 3. It's just what works. I mean, you have to experiment and see what works on your horn. You want all the notes to play, top to bottom. And if your low register is giving you a hard time, find a different read, a different type of read. It's not the right read. You shouldn't have to be barking and blasting out your low notes. You should be able to just play your loan up. Okay, now into the red bag, which I don't carry. These are more mouthpieces I use, but not all the time. Um, <clears throat> this is one of my older ones. It's an 8 New York. And uh, the facing on here is a little bit shorter. In fact, I have it marked on the side. You can't see it, but I have it scraped in the side. It says 22. So it's 22 millimeters long. This is a little bit short for an auto link, but this mouthpiece has, um, this I bought from a shop out in Washington State, I think they had it up for like $90 or something at the time I bought it, and they slightly refaced the tip, it must have had a ding in it, but it's a perfect job, so I never touched it from the day I got it, it's, uh, the rest of it is all original, but it has a slight refacing on the tip. But it plays great. This is a great mouthpiece. Has more of a traditional kind of sound. The New York has a bigger inside and less baffle. But this mouthpiece plays great. Um, you can put all different kinds of reeds on and get different sounds. Has that uh, big, especially on the Mark 7, it seems to have a certain thing to it, which, which is really good. I don't like it as much on the Mark 6. Here's my other mouthpiece, which I can use on either horn. This is a six star um, that I probably bought on eBay. And I'll tell you what's really good about this one. It has a thin tip. It responds really fast. Um, it, it has a nice flat table. And I can play a harder read on here. Like a four, uh, like a three hard Rico or a four soft Rico. Or a four, um, like a... Java or whatever and it just plays terrific now if I'm playing something in a section where I need to have fast articulation I might use like a Rigotti 3 uh, something or other on here and see if that works because I want the low notes to speak fast and the pitch is good and, and all that kind of stuff so this is my bag with the two that I don't use all the time the six star, which I need the harder reads for, 
and the uh, eight New York, which which I used last year specifically. I was uh, doing a great jazz gig in New York City at the Kismat uh, restaurant, and uh, that's a great place. It's uh, up 123rd Street or something like that, but they have jazz in there sometimes. It's not it's not one of the more well known like New York jazz clubs, but there are some really excellent jazz musicians playing gigs in there. Um, it's more uptown. And uh, I was really lucky to be with some fantastic musicians that we were doing. A, um, it was really a trio gig, and um, they invited me because it was right on the holidays. So actually we were playing a couple of Santa Claus songs and stuff, and it was fun, you know, um, and it, but it was a, it was definitely a jazz gig. It was heavy duty, you know. Most of it was jazz, uh, more stretched out stuff and outside stuff, and you know. Uh, and they have some arrangements that they play as a trio. But it was so much fun for me because they're such fantastic musicians. But that was the right mouthpiece for that gig. It just filled the room. I didn't have a microphone, and it it, it wasn't too bright. It was just perfect. I could do whatever I wanted in there. I used the Mark 7, I remember that. Okay, and then here, my phone case. This is, um, this is an 8. And this is a, 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 an 8. I, got, I think I got this off of eBay. I don't even know. But um, this has a little bit longer facing. It's a 24 millimeter facing, which is more normal for an autoling. But I'll tell you what, the inside here, has a really nice baffle tip um, and it has a really nice uh, tip rail facing the rails aren't too heavy and the inside is, is scooped out nice in here and it just it blows great it's a great mouthpiece um, I had in the past uh, one of my favorite mouthpieces I had an old Florida 8 star which I played for like a really long time and that was a that was a fantastic mouthpiece. Uh, it met a bad demise at the Hoboken train station. I dropped it on the concrete, and the whole tip got smashed. It was done. And uh, I don't remember what I did with it. Or maybe it was by Liberty State Park. Because uh, I remember, I think I chucked it in the water. I, I think I took the mouthpiece. It was a great Florida, eight star. It was all destroyed on the end. I think I took it and threw it in the Hudson River. I know I threw it some somewhere. I'm, I'm thinking, though, we must have been Liberty State Park. I don't think it was the Hoboken train station. And I just, I just threw them. I, you know, that was a different time. It was probably 1985 or something. It was a great mouthpiece. So, um, the first auto link I ever had was a 7. It was a No USA Florida. And it was tough to match reeds to it. Uh, I remember my father took me to some place, a music store, down in New Jersey, Red Bank, and I picked it out, and it played on my old Mark VI, but um, it, it turned out to be where it was always hard to match reads for, and I sold it, and then I bought a Berg Larson, and I played the Berg Larson for a pretty long time, so, um, but anyway, so that's the auto links, these are all newer ones, you know, but you got to just go through them and find ones that work, make sure the table's flat, have they have suction. Um, and that's it. All right. So I hope this is uh, satisfying to, uh, you know, the gearheads. It's always fun, right? We love equipment. I try not to change too many things because it just makes this cycle of craziness that goes on. And uh, sometimes it's better just to, you know, practice and, uh, you know, not spend too much time with the equipment because it, it works whether it works or it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't work, then get rid of it. Find something else. But once you find a few things that work, you just stay with them and it's less. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following. Thank you for sending me messages. I still want a coffee sponsor. I don't want reeds. I don't want horns. I don't want any of that. I, I have everything. I want a coffee sponsor. Starbucks, Nuts.com, Green Mountain. All right. Have a good day.